Viewer discretion advised. What's up, YouTube? Big D here. It's time to review The Librarian, Season 1, Episode 3, titled In the Horns of a Dilemma. Um, I'm down here because I just got um, a chair in here. And uh, I don't know if you guys want to see me or you just see the background. It's more colorful in a way, I guess you could say. So, uh, just saying, if you don't like the way I'm positioned, you want to see my original way, how I had it, sitting up and everything, uh, tell me if you have a problem with that. But if you don't, then uh, hi, how you doing? What's up? Spoiler review for the episode. If you've not seen the episode, please go to tnt.com slash the librarians. Go watch the full episode there. Episode 3, baby. So, uh, yeah, check it out, man, and uh, let's talk about it. It should take me less than two minutes to recap the episode, pros and cons, give you my final score. So, first off, man, eight people are missing, and the team is willing to risk their lives for these people because it, there's this company called Golden Axe, and it, it's all connected, and what, you know, everyone's missing that uh, goes there. So, it's kind of like a TARDIS, which... There's this place called the Annex, which, of course, Jank, Jenkins works there, uh, his room, and it, like, turns this door, and it's called the back door, the back door, and it basically spins, and it takes you to a place anywhere around the world where there is a door, so they head to Boston, and it's pretty freaking awesome, the technology, though. So, uh, they meet Karen at Golden Axe, they, uh, the team, which they split up, of course, um, Rebecca Roje, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce her last name, Mystique from X-Men, she goes uh, a certain way, and then our Cassandra, Ezekiel, and Jacob, Jacob Stone, right, Jacob, they go uh, their own way, and they find a room full of skeletons, or skulls, and uh, in the human resources room, so they're in a labyrinth, which is a maze, and a minotaur, you gotta do that Bill Compton True Blood voice, a minotaur, and that uh, minotaur basically is after them. And they need to, uh, he's somewhere in the maze. But, first off, Brain Grape. Someone tweeted during the show, Brain Grape is working again. Or, uh, Great Brain. Bra brain Grape, Great Brain. Same thing, man. It's pretty hilarious. Uh, so, they attack the Minotaur. And, uh, they end up going back to Jenkins. So, uh, they... Basically what's happening is there's like 14 virgins, and it's hard to find 14 virgins in this world now, and they're getting sacrificed. So, like, you know, good luck finding them. So there's six more to be sacrificed. The Minotaur attacks, and it's Tyler Maine, who is Michael Myers in Halloween, of course, and Sabretooth and X-Men, the original, the trilogy, who also was with Rebecca as a uh, mystique. So, mutant brotherhood, mutant pride. And uh, he attacks, man, and they run, and they start making a plan, and uh, they attack again, and, like, Rebecca basically pulls his nose ring off, and it's pretty freaking fantastic. So after that, Ezekiel and Cassandra have a moment, and they're getting the threads, and Karen has a gun to them. After that, he just throws the thread, and it unravels, and the labyrinth starts shaking, and everything just goes back to normal, and they go, uh, they escape the labyrinth. The Minotaur is what looks to be destroyed, but afterwards ends up that he is where Karen works, like inside the hallways. And uh, Karen is, and her people are presumably dead after that. So Jacob tells uh, Cassandra that he likes her, and uh, that's basically how the episode is. What did I think about this episode overall, man? What's the, what's the main feeling for this? I'll start off with my cons, just to get that out of the way. There's not that many cons. They didn't show Karen as much. Now, I heard that she was a special guest, that actress, but... I still would have liked to have seen her just a little bit more. Just, just a little bit more. They could have shown her, you know, it would have been fine. But, uh, hey, whatever. Still, I kind of would have, you know, I felt like they didn't use her character as much as they could have. Because she didn't feel a threat. Based. She didn't feel like a big threat. It was more of the Minotaur. The Minotaur. Um, it's, some jokes are corny. A little bit of them, you know, I, I look at it and I don't feel nothing. And then... At parts I feel like, you know, hell, this is a good show. And then parts I'm like... <sighs> so, you know, there's different feelings and emotions towards this. Now, look at me, I'm rocking. Oh, man. This feels great. It really does. Anyway, the pros. And I've had this for like six years. I was just downstairs. Anyway. The action in this episode. Now, this ain't an action-packed episode overall. It's not like... You know. But for what we've had, it's 
pretty good, pretty damn go good. Uh, I wish, you know, it's kind of corny again also because she just slides under the Minotaur and it's like boo, 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 boo. And it's like, we haven't seen that before. But, you know, for what we had, yeah, it's pretty good, pretty good. Tyler Maine as the Minotaur, you know, all he did was like, like that. I mean, he's doing Joe Maganello's job, like in True Blood, where he's just like, as a wolf, as a um, Alcide, but still. Pretty freaking awesome having him there. A little, another special guest, so uh, please, surprise me again. With Bruce Campbell being Santa next week, I wanted that as a kid. Like, oh, please be Bruce Campbell as Santa. And now he is. Merry Christmas. You're welcome. Uh, it's creepy. That Minotaur, when it's like furry, he's creepy. Uh, the relationship, I just love the group. Ezekiel's relatable in some sort of way. Cassandra's relatable in some sort of way. And Jacob Stone, or Mr. Stone, is relatable in some sort of way. Uh, Rebecca herself, you know, she's okay. She aight. She aight. But overall, the group's pretty cool. And the first mission that they did, facing a Minotaur and the Labyrinth and the Maze, that's pretty freaking awesome. I can't wait till Flynn comes back and learns about the Minotaur. Other than that, the Labyrinth, the Maze was pretty awesome, pretty uh, creepy, kind of messed with my mind a little bit, but overall, I think I got through it. And overall, the jokes in this episode, you know, like, Brain Grape made me laugh my ass off. So overall, I'm going to give this Librarian's episode a A-, minus, secondarily a solid B. So overall, a 9.10, 9 out of 10, man. It's a pretty great episode. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, I believe last week got over 7 million viewers, so it is like the number one launch series of 2014 of new series so congratulations TNT all you leverage fans out there and everything and um, you did good thank you so much hashtag the librarians you guys are awesome TNT you better not cancel this show anyway thanks so much for watching this episode guys and well this review I should call it and I'll see you guys next week for uh, Bruce Campbell being Santa which is called and Santa's Midnight Run oh gosh I can't wait so seriously See y'all soon. Get out. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about the librarians and what you want to see in the future. And, uh, I don't know. It kind of reminds me of Doctor Who and reminds me of Warehouse 13. A lot of people are saying, but I did see Doctor Who, though. Two episodes so far. I'm new at this. May the Spock be with you. Always. See you guys soon. Hit that subscribe button. Hit like. See you next week, baby.